also probably share this beautiful shot of Lisa which she made yesterday during a video so let's go and enjoy this beautiful jungle place now let's jump into the jungle guys good morning guys where am I I am in the middle of the jungle of Kopangan and I am going to walk to this viewpoint up there somewhere as a bonus today guys I will add this beautiful TA of Lisa um, I did a YouTube show with her yesterday uh, with Sean from Hard Falking and it's very beautiful to see her colorful charts and she will explain you what will happen to Bitcoin in her opinion and what trajectory we can follow the next couple of weeks, months. Interesting view of Lisa, so enjoy that part while I bring you to the top of this beautiful uh, viewpoint where I probably can enjoy this water or a coffee and I will share these beautiful views with you guys. But without further ado, uh, you two, should we jump straight into some charts and then we'll have a bit yeah, of a Yeah, yeah, let's jump into some charts. Let me share my screen. Oh my God. All Get right. So, all right. So this is the BTC chart that um, I've got up on Twitter at the moment. So this is a 12 hour chart. Um, as we can see, we're sort of in this corrective phase right now. So we are end of the month, sort of beginning of the month, depending on where you are in the world. Um, and we've got uh, monthly features about to release. So um, I think we're going to get a small pump upwards and then we will drop again down to this point here, which is about 9147-ish. Mm -hmm. Uh, we could go break through that with a wick down to this 8,000-ish um, sort of point and then continue up. So there's a couple of different patterns um, once we've sort of broken this resistance, this red resistance. So, you know, we could be doing um, sort of like a, a bull trap and, you know, heading up to this 10,200 to 10,400 sort of range, which is a, a long-term target that I've had, I think, for about two months. Um, so, and, and that would sort of trap a lot of the bulls in there uh, if they don't know what they're doing. If they're Because I've, I've seen a lot of people on Twitter say that once it gets to this, uh, breaks over this resistance, the red resistance, they will buy. So, you know, if... A lot of whales know that that's going to happen you know we're going to get this short-term spike up here and then the whales are going to take it down so, so what, what you are you know, saying lisa <laughs> people should stop saying what they're going to do on twitter <laughs> probably <laughs> dd i see you mopping your forehead there are you, are you, are you nervous <laughs> about the price you got any questions at this point? i am sweating no I, i've been watching this chart like for a week already the, the, the day that Lisa posted it. I used it in one of my videos because I was interested in this Elliott wave. It even educated me and my followers because of, you know, the A, B, C, D, E, and then yeah. probably a lift off uh, to the top. And yeah, I'm just very fascinated by these charts and these technical tools and the predictor market. And, but the combination of this with all the psychology of the people uh, makes yeah. it a really beautiful game to play for me. So yeah, I'm very yeah, excited to see what will happen. I love the psychology of the people. So I, I always keep an eye on what sort of Twitter and, you know, what the market is saying. And, you know, with, with that, once the market sort of starts turning bullish and I've noticed, um, you know, everyone was sort of saying just recently while I was saying it was going up that we were going to 2000 and I'm like, mm, that's not happening. So now I'm seeing a lot of um, charts saying that we're going to sort of 11,000, 12,000. And I'm just like, okay, we're going to go down short term. So I don't think it's a, a massive drop, but, um, you know, we're going to get that sort of short term drop just to make people sort of wonder what direction we're going. So, and, and that's kind of a manipulation game that a lot of the whales and the big exchanges play because it's the best way for them to make money. So if you're taking somebody else's like trade out or their stops out, then essentially they're not making as much money and the exchanges can, you know, buy lower or sell higher sort of thing. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which of course is a big play nowadays because since mm. the halving, um, since the halving, the exchanges um, are the ones that earn the most Bitcoins daily. So that they are the ones that can release the most Bitcoins to the market, you know? Yeah, now yeah. The miners only mine about 800, 900 bitcoins a day. I think the exchanges 
have the ability to release 1200 bitcoins a day just in the fees they have been making so yeah. the changes will play a huge role in this next bull run i think so yeah yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, for the miners, essentially, like we, when we got down to the sort of the $3,000 mark um, before halvening, it, you know, it's not cost effective and it doesn't stay down in that sort of point in that region long. So um, right now we're looking at sort of six to $7,000 for, to mine, um, to make it profitable, even just for a small profit. So, you know, if we're looking at that, if we have, um, you know, this is a, a long-term chart. So if we can't pass this sort of resistance or we only do it by a small amount, um, our correction's probably going to bounce sort of mid fives and it'll be a fairly strong bounce at that point because, you know, the, the miners are not cost effective at that point. So it can't hang around too long because long-term outlook for BTC, we want it, you know, I know there's the people that don't want to see it survive, but for crypto to survive, um, BTC needs to survive because that's what people know. And um, yeah, so I think, you know, if we do get that correction down to the sort of the mid fives, it's only going to be really short lived. Right. But the 10.5K still is this huge resistance. Um, yeah, yeah. So this is a um, this is the chart, sort of the the BLX. It um, it goes back to the beginning of time. It's one that I used last week as well. So at the moment we're here, and um, this target we are almost at. So if we can pass that, we it's potential that we're going to go down to this point. So right now. Um, Sorry, is 10, 10, 5 or 10, 2 that long term support, Lisa? So the long term support is 10, 2. 10, 2. Or, okay. or just, a, just below that, actually, now because we've moved sort of on, across on the diagonal. But if you get, um, there's a lot of what we call breakout traders. So they have orders waiting on the other side of that resistance. And, you know, the moment that sort of um, tests and then retests as support they're going to put their orders there and we'll probably, you know, break out to about 10, three, maybe 10, five. So yeah, it's, it's just, it's the way they trade. And then, you know, the whales know that people trade, uh, there's a lot of breakout tra traders. So they're probably going to take it down again. Right. That's, that's just my theory on how whales work. Okay. What's the other, uh, the, the green line there is it's around the nine three figure roughly looking at it. Oh, I, that was it? a, that's a long-term support. So within that region, okay. um, which is what we've been sort of hitting around. So, yeah, so we've got um, at this point, we had a bullish pivot, uh, which was about eight, four, two, five from memory. Yep. So, um, and we were watching that for quite a long time until we actually broke it. And then when we came down and retested, um, it held and it's held until this point. Um, but the, the critical sort of area now is that breaking 10.5, if we can break that, then essentially we may not drop down to the fives. So, you know, that that's kind of our next pivot within this area and within this region. So yep. if um, whales want to take it up now, which, I don't think is the best way to go um, because I think, you know, gaining liquidity from lower areas, whether we go down to the fives or not is a different thing. We may only go down to that bullish pivot at eight and a half. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then take it straight back up so that the miners remain um, profitable.
Republic Cup. Beautiful. Just to enjoy, guys. I want to ask you guys, please comment below. Could you live in a beautiful place like this? A tree house, fully open, fully accessible for everybody. Um, outside shower, toilet and all that stuff. Could you live like this? Let me know because I really want to know if you're able to do this. Sell everything, live in a minimalistic lifestyle and just invest in Bitcoin and wait for Bitcoin to moon again. Comment below or fill the poll. I want to thank you very much for watching this video again. I hope you liked the information. I hope you enjoyed the views. Please, if you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell button so you'll be notified in every new video. And yes, I would love you to share it with your communities because that will make our channel grow even more and that's what we need we need our channel to grow more we want to reach 10k followers with a nanny view so we can monetize the channel a little bit more so we can share with people all around the world thank you and see you tomorrow again from this beautiful island Copangan. zoom out in crypto and zoom in in life and live this life to the fullest every single minute of the day and just go with the flow crazy things like this one today might happen to you you might run into people that can lead to a new adventure in life you might run into people that you would never expect to meet in the top of a hill in the jungle in a tree house thank you for watching see you tomorrow bye